I tried to mumble a reply and tell her otherwise but large dummies strapped in our mouths kept the both of us silent. Oh I think that it is so sweet that you both have been kept like this, together but unable to have any fun, but maybe I can help. Sheila went on to explain that mummy had been in touch with her before our so-called first meeting. She had told Sheila that we could be kept with her for a few hours. Sheila then told us that she and Mummy both attended the same meeting and she was in need of two subjects to try some things out. So what shall we do with you, she said. I think we can take you both to the back room where we have some more items. But don't worry, you will still be together and when you leave will be the cutest little girls again. We were taken to the back room of the shop and had the door locked behind us. It was like a mini special store in this room, with the walls covered with everything you could imagine. Seeing all of this made me more concerned and I could tell by how Rebecca was gripping my hand that she was somewhat concerned also. But before we had a chance to complain about the situation, we were both directed to a table where we would be changed. I was directed onto the waiting changing pad without delay and my legs were forced up and apart by Suzanne so that she could change me. Then came the warm softness of baby powder, but I could not smell it as while this was happening another assistant came into the room, dressed in a nurse's uniform. She immediately pulled a bonnet over my head to keep me in the dark so to speak. Sheila pulled the new nappy into place and fastened it snugly, it felt good to be protected again, but I was unsure as to what was happening to both me and Becky anymore. I was then lifted from the table and guided down onto a waiting chair. I was confused, having no recollection of any chairs in the room, but when she lifted my legs onto a platform I realised it must be a pushchair brought in by the other nurse. I was soon strapped to it, leaving me with nowhere to go. Soon after my limited vision through my mask enabled me to see that Rebecca was now in a similar pushchair and next to me. Now don't you two littles look so cute together, said Sheila. Time for a little feed then you will be having so lovely quality time together. I did not realise that Sheila was once more next to me. There was just a gentle touch of her hand rubbing across me, which would have made me jump if I had not been restrained in the pushchair. There, there, it's all right, she said, now sounding more motherly than anything else. Her hand then moved to the front of my hood as she opened the eye covers first then looked at me. Now I will release your dummy to feed you but if you speak out of turn then I will force feed you. Do you both understand me, said Suzanne having opened her eye covers as well. We both just nodded together and kept quiet as we did not like the idea of being force fed. Now being able to see more clearly, I could see that we were both in the same style pushchairs with a tray fixed over our laps. I tried to look further over towards Rebecca but the bonnets we were wearing had some sort of posture collar built into them giving us no neck movement. The nurse assistant came back into the room with two bowls of food, well I presume it was as there was no way to recognise what it actually was. No sooner from our dummy being removed, the first spoonfuls of whatever it was were pushed into our mouths. It was a porridge kind of consistency but tasted both savoury and sweet at the same time. It was hard to work out exactly the flavour, but it was far better tasting than I had expected to be honest. Once finished it was washed down with a bottle of juice for each of us before our dummies were put back in. Now then my little ones, said Sheila, you have been so good eating your dinner I think it time to let both of you have a little nap together.